round eight of the Champ Car World Series at Elkhart Lake marked the halfway point of the season. The pressure was on. Aggression was the rule of the day. When it was controlled, it was awesome. But when it wasn't, there was mayhem. While the front runners tangled, Alex Tagliani kept his nose clean and drove brilliantly. His first victory at 85 tries. It is great, Daddy! It's so good! I'm so proud of you! Now, time for round nine, where anything can happen. The Champ Car World Series Grand Prix of Denver is next. Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series, powered by Ford. Today, coverage of the Champ Car World Series Grand Prix of Denver. A beautiful, warm August day to go racing through the streets of Denver, the ninth round of the 2004 championship season. Hello again, everyone. I'm Rick Benjamin. Great to have you with us today. A whole big change from last week at Road America. That was the longest road course in North America at four miles. Today, a very tight nine-turn, one and two-thirds mile racetrack that's been very hard for these drivers to get hold of. Just past the halfway point of the season, we had our fourth different winner of the year last week. Sebastian Bourdais leads the standings with four victories. Paul Tracy's won twice. Ryan Hunter Ray in the top six in points with a win at Milwaukee. Alex Tagliani added his name to that list of winners, and he has gotten in front of Tracy now in the season standings. Take a look at this. Bourdais, with two bonus points this weekend, has built his lead to nearly 50 now over Bruno Giancara, his teammate. Alex Tagliani moves to third now over Petri Carpentier and Ryan hunter Ray rounding out the top six. Good to have you with us today for the ninth round of the season. Four-time Trans Am champ Tommy Kendall joins us. As we've looked ahead to this race, Tommy, the battle between the Newman Haas mates, it really almost boiled over last week, didn't it? Well, you've kind of got a powder keg at the front of this grid. It's the Newman Haas guys on the front where you got the players guys who aren't exactly fast friends. But up front, I think it's uh, Bruno's been frustrated by Sebastian's speed. But last week it came to a boil. He felt that Sebastian wronged him by squeezing him and effectively putting him out of the race. And so I, I wouldn't be surprised if that boils over this weekend. We will see. They start alongside in the front row. Let's show you the layout here. Nine turns, 1.65 miles. Take us around, Tommy. And the story is really the surface. The layout is tight, but the surface is really hard to get a hold of, especially in turn one and turn five. Those braking areas are especially treacherous. They've reconfigured turn nine a little bit tighter on the entry, wider on the exit. But the whole thing here is not falling off the island. If you go overstep the bounds at all, you don't just slide wide, you hit the wall. And that has been happening here this weekend. We've seen many drivers come to grips with these concrete walls. This is the Champ Car Grand Prix of Denver. 90 laps, just under 150 miles, a little shorter than what has been run here the last couple of years. Bruno Giancara has won the first two races on this circuit the last two seasons, driving for two different teams. He's on the outside pole here today. Now let's take a look at our starting grid, powered by Ford here in Denver. 18 cars and up front, Bourdain and Giancara. And we talked about that pairing. It's going to be very interesting heading into turn one. Will Bruno Giancara yield to Bourdais? Second row, Tracy and Carpentier. And Tracy gave us a little hint. He said, I think there's two guys very motivated around Bourdais. Look for some moves. Good runs to get to the third row. Dominguez didn't even run Saturday. Dominguez didn't run Saturday, but he looked very strong. Looked like he could challenge Sebastian on Friday, and he's also very, very aggressive. In row four, it's Almondinger and Hunter Ray. A.J. Almondinger, his... Uh, we were used to him being in the top 10. Look for another good run in front of his hometown. Mario Haberfeld, who ran well at Elkhart without much to show for it at the end of it, has been running well in the Reynard. In row six, Alex Tagliani and Jimmy Vassar. What a difference a week makes. Both of these guys have struggled to get a hold of this racetrack with their Lolas. In row seven, Michelle Jourdain. Again, really, it feels like he's close, but has not been able to match the setup or the pace of his teammate Almondinger. And then Rodolfo Levine coming off his best career finish second, now way back in, in the pack next to Guy Smith. And in row nine, one of the long couples, our version of Bogey and Bacall, Mazzacani and Sparafico have been broken up this weekend, and that's his best start on the inside of row nine. And the Bridgestone keys to the race. The first one is that front row. Can the Newman Haas team get along? Second, fuel mileage with the new pit rules. Fuel mileage is going to be absolutely what's on everyone's mind for the first half of this race. Save fuel, save fuel, save fuel. And the final one, the slick surface. As I mentioned, at most tracks, if you get a little bit wide in the front slides, you come off line a little bit. Here, you hit the wall. 
Kendall. All right, thank you, Tommy Kendall. We'll have three different onboard views for you today. As we did last week, we'll ride with Mario Hopperfeld in the Cummins number no. five for Derek Walker Racing. We've got that great look just under the nose of that Reynard. Oriel Servia will take us for a ride today. Servia with a terrific qualifying effort. He lines up sixth, ran second here one year ago, still searching for his first career champ car win. Bruno Schenkera has been the dominant force here the first two years on this Denver circuit. Outside pole, though, this weekend, and he'll have to deal with his teammate Sebastian Bourdais, who's the points leader. Calvin Fish, a whole mix of changes, especially on pit road this weekend. That's right, Rick. Really, this year, there's been a lot of consternation amongst the top teams that their efforts may be thwarted by the pit stop regulations that have been in effect. Essentially, you had to do a mandatory amount of green flag pit stops, and certainly that came into effect last weekend with the leaders getting caught out, and ultimately, that led to Alex Tagliani's first victory. But today, they've changed things. Essentially, the teams can pit whenever they want in terms of under caution or under green. But the only rule that they now have to abide by, the fact they need to do it between lap 51 and 77, that should negate any fuel economy runs for more news today let's go down to Derek Daly well one driver who doesn't need fuel economy he just needs speed is Jimmy Vassar drives number 12 the Gulfstream car he will equal a phenomenal record today because he will do consecutive start number 192 equaling that record of great Alonso Jr. of course a former champ car champion now, Jimmy Vassar has not had a great weekend here, though. Didn't have a good car in the morning warm-up. They've completely changed the setup. But Jimmy Vassar, one of the great names, the 96 Champ Car Champion, he's won 10 races. He's had eight pole positions. He's had more than 11 million in earnings. Today, if he ends on the podium, he'll earn his money. Field lining up two by two by two, ready to go here in the streets of Denver. Mario Haberfeld getting in line in the five car. Cleaning the tires one more time, single file for now, as they head down to turn seven, the end of the backstretch. And Tommy, they've narrowed that corner up on entry, haven't they? They've narrowed it up on entry. There's, you don't have the, the variety of choices online, and they, but they've made it a little wider on the exit. Now watch the first two rows here. Watch Tracy on the inside of row two, and watch Junkera, who's starting on the outside of row one. Both those guys have very little to lose relative to Sebastian in the championship. Getting ready to line it up now. The first turn at the end of this straightaway is a 90-degree right. It's been hard for many of these drivers to get hold of. Glad to have you with us. Green flag is in the air. We're in Denver, and we're underway. Bourdais to turn one. Jankira right with him. And they both go. Bourdais goes around. Jankira gets away. Another couple of cars tangle. I, that is just what Jean Kerry needed. That's exactly what he needed, but I think he might have a penalty coming. It looked like he got to the line before Bourdais. That's an electronic scoring audit. If he, if his transponder got to the line, and look at this. More dicing back in the pack. Justin oh. Wilson, Rodolfo Levine, Nelson Philippe, his first drive for My Jack Conquest. Full course yellow on lap one, and last week's winner, Alex Tagliani, broke the front wing off the eight car. So caution waving here, and that's what a lot of these drivers were talking about early was, could we get through a lap? Yeah, could well. And like I said, you had two guys with huge incentive to make moves coming into a corner where it's almost impossible to make one. You saw Bourdais up on the rumble strips. Did Hard you not give got, him enough room there? Uh, he, he crowded him, but uh, I think it was probably payback. You know, he, it's probably about what he felt like happened. On board, Junkera. Definitely oh. a bump. Definitely a bump. Almost a mirror copy of what happened last week. So Junkera comes away okay. They're going to have to come and get Alex Tagliani, last week's winner. Bourdais has refired. Full course caution to begin the fun in Denver. Take a look at this. Alex Tagliani with the eight car minus its nose cone. Now remember, he got caught up in that tangle after Bourdais spun. There were three cars involved. He was dead in the water back there. It appears as though he has managed to uh, keep himself from going no more than one lap down by doing this. They sent him off pit road moments ago, minus the new nose piece that they were ready to mount up. He's in front of the pace car right now. Yes, he is. And so he's running as quickly as he can. He'll come into the pits again, and he'll have the nose the nose wing put on. And this is this is heads up stuff. This is years of endurance racing by Paul Genalozzi leads to a call like this. This is what you do in the 24 hours of Daytona and stuff like that. But they also impressed me last week. They really played that yellow green flag stuff to a T. Now let's take you back. This is on turn one, lap one. Points leader Sebastian Bourdais and his teammate Junkera. You were riding with Junkera. There was contact. Bourdais went around. So far, no penalty for Junkera. Here's a look from Oriol Servia's view in sixth. 
He was able to get through cleanly. That's Mario Dominguez in the Urdez 55 immediately to his right. And the eight car, the Johnson Control team on pit road, they uh, brought him in, took the broken nose off, and the decision was made by Paul Gentilosi, as Tommy pointed out, the team owner, to leave the, uh, the nose off and send it back out. Calvin Fish. Well, certainly some heads-up work here by the Rocket Sports team, Paul Gentilosi. Eventful start to the race. First of all, how did Tag get involved? Well, he got hit from behind, pushed into another car, broke the wing and cut a tire. So we're, uh, well, we're going to get a break here. The pace car is going one more lap to let the field bunch up. We're at the back, but we're still running. Okay, Olivia, straight strategy this year at Cleveland to get a podium result there, and certainly last week, that first win. Good stuff by this team. As we watch Tagliani get up to speed now to try to catch the pack. He is one lap down. Now he's being shown on the same lap. He just picked up his lap back, so three laps are complete. To Derek Daly. Quick update. I know it doesn't look great for Bourdais. He's now down in 13th place. However, Kenny Siebig on the left side of your picture here and Craig Hampson on the right side. Craig looks after the engineering. They have been in contact with Sebastian. He said the car is fine. He's very cool, very calm in the car. And they are actually bringing him in to top off the fuel. So that is a discussion that's going on right now, not fully decided yet. There is Bourdais. He will restart from 13th spot at this point if they elect not to pit. Coming off the final corner here. This is nine, heading to the new start finish line on the short straightaway immediately to the left of the cars. Safety cars in. Green back in the air to begin lap four. Junquera. Tracy behind him, Carpentier, Mario Dominguez, Serbia, and Almendinger. You're, this is Oriol Serbia. You saw a little glimpse of how treacherous the brake zone is there for turn one. You saw Bruno get the rears locked up. Back of the car jumped out to the right. Now, Giancara has won two straight here, has yet to win in 2004. How hard is he going to be to pass for Paul Tracy? Well, we saw it. no one was able to pass anyone uh, for the lead in the last two years. So, I mean, qualifying very important here. A um, little bit different, probably even harder to pass now with the fuel uh, considerations. Uh, Mario Dominguez, I talked to him before the race and said, are you going to be able to make the moves like last year? He says, well, unfortunately, with getting rid of the fuel windows, he says you're so preoccupied with trying to save fuel that you, you can't be aggressive. It just uses up too much gas. But we were talking off air, Tommy, the way things are set up with these Ford Cosworth motors now, there's not as much control over fuel flow for the driver as we see how successful Junkera has been here, led all the way two years ago and led all but 30 laps last year. Yeah, the, you don't have the, the same kind of mixture knob that you had when you had the engine wars going on. The difference between fuel, full lean and full rich was a big amount in terms of saved fuel. But the, the, the fact remains now, without a fuel window, you have the incentive, if you can save, sip enough fuel and go a lap longer than everybody else, you're in great shape. Just like in your street car, if you're concerned about fuel economy, there are a lot of things these drivers can do to save fuel. You can short shift, you can brake a little earlier, you can let the car roll through the corners more. A lot of changes you can make. But if you're behind, the natural inclination is to put it to the mat. Well, but the thing about it here, but with the brake zones being as slippery as they are, by rolling into the corner and coasting a bit, it really doesn't hurt you much lap time wise. The two Forsyth Index cars, second and third. A.J. Allmendinger back in sixth position. Bruno Junquera in a familiar spot for him. He is out in front. Tracy chasing him. Tracy with two wins. Let's take you back just a few moments ago to the drop of the green. The contact in turn one. Points leader Bourdais. Look who gets to the, the line first. See, Bruno's in the right. The white nose. He got to the start finish line first, which is prohibited by the rules. I'm surprised we didn't see a flag on that because it's an electronic audit where the scoring system just says this transponder got to the line before that transponder. It's, it's not a judgment call. And he was clearly ahead at the line there. I'm surprised we haven't seen a call from the officials on that. Jam car officials say no penalty will be assessed. Is it because they saw Bourdais get to the corner first? Um, well, Bourdais didn't get to the corner first. He, he was, I mean, he, he, he got pinched with a, uh, Bruno and nose ahead. So um, we'll, we'll have to see if we can get an explanation for that. Oriol Servia, the OakTV.com machine in fifth position. Mario Dominguez directly in front of him. Fourth, your leader, Junquera, the Pacific Air, number six. Tracy and his teammate Carpentier, second and third. Here's Tracy. To talk a little bit more about that start, Trans Am operates under the same rules, and after the driver's meeting, the, my front row mate, my teammate, asked, uh, well, if I get to the line first, but then I make it right at turn one, they said that's not the rule. The rule is you don't cross the line first. As we take a ride here with Mario Haberfeld, 
Derek Walker's number five. He's in ninth position. Bourdais, meantime, starting to get going here. 13th at the restart. Bourdais, the pole qualifier. He's passed four cars already, and there he is in the McDonald's car. So we're going to get a chance to see Sebastian Bourdais. We've talked about how fast he is as a front runner. He yeah. can't sit back and let the race come to him. Bourdais pulling away from Hopperfeld. He is in ninth. Hopperfeld back to 10th. There's that battle. This is the pit straightaway that used to be the main straightaway. Junkera continues to lead here in Denver. There is plenty more to come. We'll ride with Oriole Servia, show you all kinds of racing action here. Our Bridgestone passion for excellence, a little trip through some wintry conditions. And Bronte will show us what happens in the evening here in Denver. On the streets of Denver, alongside Tommy Kendall, I'm Rick Benjamin, Derek Daly, Calvin Fisher on pit road for us. Closing in on lap 20 of 90 today. Bruno Jancara from the outside pole. Got the drop on his teammate Sebastian Bourdais, who spun after contact in turn one. Jancara has led all the way after that turn one incident. Dominguez with a wiggle there. Oh, and he is really charging under brakes. Uh, the problem is he's he's not getting onto the straightaway particularly well. So I think if he was within a car length or two, he'd have something for Carpati under braking, but he's coming off there not nearly as well as Carpati. He seems to be really good here in turn one and two. He's able to get close there, can't quite get to the inside. Yeah, That's not a really good passing it's place. It's really not a passing zone, but, uh, you know, I'm always surprised. Sometimes guys will improvise. <laughs> and by putting the pressure on, you, you raise the possibility of a guy making a mistake, which here, again, the surface, like this braking zone they're in right here, if you go a little bit too fast, you get the front slide, back sliding. It's every other track, you can make a little adjustment on line. But here, it's, if you step over that line, it's all of a sudden, it's everything you can do to keep from crashing. Serbia rides fifth, the YokeTV.com number 11 car for Dale Coyne's team. Carpentier with his mirrors full from Dominguez in the 55 year Des car. Carpentier Dominguez is on his push team. to pass. 60 seconds is the time, and here he comes whistling into nine, but he can't get to the inside. He's going to try to turn underneath him here. Oh! Move for third spot, Dominguez up over the curbing. Oh, and Pat saw him and gave him room, which it kept it from turning out exactly the same way as Bourdais and Junquera. Great move by Mario Dominguez. Good jump off of the final corner. Down the front straightaway into one. Didn't see any way he could do it. He went way over the curb to get by. Yep. Serbia continues to run fifth, and he's closing in now on Carpentier. That battle allowed him to get up in contact. You've got Almendinger right there as well. So fourth, fifth, and sixth are very close on the racetrack. And here's Bourdais, who has moved to seventh. He's gotten by Ryan Hunter Ray. So Bourdais on the charge with 20 laps on the board. And Carpentier slipped coming on the straightaway. Might get, yeah, it's going to give Serbia a shot at him. Here comes Serbia. Serbia. Pushed to pass as well. Inside into nine. Can he make it stick? And he does. Carpentier gives up two spots. Great move by Serbia. And big wheel spin for Carpentier coming off that corner, too. Might have overheated his rear tires. Here comes Almendinger. He smells blood in the water. Oh. They touch. Carpentier forced offline. Almendinger gets it to the bottom of the racetrack. Bourdais can't do anything. He's got to watch. Here he comes. Well, they've got Carpentier all off his rhythm now. And that's what you try to do when you see a guy that's been knocked out of his rhythm. You just want to take advantage of it before he gets back into it. So let's reset at the head of the field. Still Jean Carroll leading Tracy. Dominguez is now third. Serbia fourth. Carpentier shuffled all the way to fifth in front of Almendinger. Bourdais back there in seventh. He wants to get up and get around Carpentier. And this all started at this corner that's coming up. This double left-hander right here is where... Carpentier got a little crossed up last lap and, and allowed those guys to get a run on him. Send John to the log back straightaway down to turn nine. Bourdais in seventh spot. Let's show you what happened just moments ago. Lots of action here in Denver. Carpentier was running third. Dominguez all over him. This is into one. And it is slippery down there where Dominguez is. You see him get up on the curbing a little bit. Carpentier catched him out of the corner of his eye. It leaves him some room. Oriel Serbia next to make the move at the end of the backstretch. He got close and with the push to pass, and then it was just a matter of getting inside him under braking. 
Wasn't much Carpentier could do about that. Now here's Almendinger with a terrific move inside. And that's a that's a that's an aggressive move. He came from a, about two car lengths back, banged wheels, managed to keep it straight, opened the door for Bourdais, but he had to back out of it. Riding with Oriol Serbia up to fourth. Calvin Fish, I know that's putting a smile on Dale Goyne's face. It certainly does have a smile on Dale's face, and we've seen some much better qualifying performances by the team. Oriol shown flashes of brilliance all year. Now it puts you in a strong position for the race, Dale. No, we're good. He got by Carpentier, so he's sitting in fourth now. He did a good job here last year. So we'll, uh, we'll see. There's more strategy in it today, so that we like that. So we'll see what happens here. With the yellow that we saw early, what are you looking at for a number for the first pit stop? Are you going to share that with us? We'll see. We're going to try to go as long as we can, unless, of course, there's a yellow on the window. So, which everybody's doing the same thing. So, as always, these teams holding their cards close to the chest. Well, at least now with this rule change, the wide window, 26 laps long, 27 laps long, and it can be yellow or green. You don't have to play the game of coming in twice. If you need to stop, you don't have to make it under green at least. Bourdais on the move meantime. He's gotten by Ryan Hunter Ray there in the four car, the Rodez machine, but he can't get by Carpentier, who seems to have gotten back on his rhythm now. Actually, Hunter Ray's coming back at Bourdais. Every time you, that, that's, that's one of the tougher things. When you have a guy in front and behind, you can't be quite as aggressive because if, if you get chopped off and you slide wide, then you open yourself up to the guy behind. The best deal is not to have a battle on two fronts and only have a guy in front of you that you're working on. Now, Bourdais has radioed in saying to update you on some of the radio traffic that we've intercepted. Bourdais says the car is good, but I can't pass anymore. He's gotten up to the, the guys that are running pretty quick speed-wise. Gets a little disruption in his airflow over the wing. And it's really, really difficult when it kind of stabilizes. We saw while we were hearing from Dale Coyne, Jimmy Vassar had come to pit road for his first of what most likely would be two stops for everyone here today. Vassar struggling with a balky gearbox and just an inability to grab hold of the racetrack here all weekend long. Remember, ah, look at this. Here comes Carpentier decides to come to pit road now on lap 25. That might be a function of uh, the car really starting to spin the rear tires. Let's listen. Four tires going on. Watch that. All right. Watching Sebastian Bourdais. Sebastian Bourdais going down into the corner. Bruno Giancara taking a look off the back of his wing. Giancara continuing to lead. Working lap 26 of 90 here on the streets of Denver. Tracy Dominguez at Oriol Serbia. The rest of the top four. Shankara down the back stretch. He's led all the way so far. Paul Tracy trying to reel him in. 1.2 seconds back. Dominguez, Serbia. And points leader, Bourdais. Oh! On the outside of Gonzalez trying to lap him. Shankara up through the gearbox. Last time by, he gestured at the officials. Gonzalez locks up the brakes going down into one. Moves to the outside to let Levine go by. Looks like Gonzalez may have a problem back in the uh, motor area. That's another look at John Carroll waving to the starter as he was shifting. And if you look, he wasn't, I mean, you don't have much time. You're so busy with the shifter. You don't, but what he's asked for, he, the blue flag is given to the lapped cars. And so if he just is calm and waits until they're slowing him down and starts waving, he's lost an opportunity. So he starts being a little dramatic ahead of time. And like I said before, it's like the, it's the equivalent of, of being really dramatic when you try to draw a charge in basketball. Shakira took the lead in turn one. A little slip there as he comes off the corner. This is late in a run for these drivers, so tire wear starting to become an issue. Shakira closing in on Alex Tagliani. It would drop tag a lap down in the eight car. Shakira dives inside in turn nine. Tracy behind him by 0.3 seconds, so Tracy has really closed the gap now. 
your Ford telemetry. Taking a look at how Junkera is operating car number six. Now he's up on the back of Tag. Let's see if he heads for the pit lane. Tag does, so Bruno stays out. Ryan Hunter Ray, Jimmy Vassar on pit road. Paul Tracy planning to stop next lap. Okay, Paul, I want you to pit this lap. Pit this lap. Copy. Shakira down into the corner, listening to Paul Tracy, hearing from Neil Mickelwright. Tracy running second. Looks like they will pit this time by. Bruno got wide on the exit of turn one. Tracy's radio, he's reeling in Junkera. Maybe he's not happy about deciding to pit then. Well, this is exactly what you want to do. If you're going to pit before, you want to be on the guy's bumper and then hope that you have a better outlap than he does on cold tires. Bruno, I mean, if Bruno, Bruno might have to come in this lap too because they were in lap 38. This is a long run. Tracy showed the nose of the one car to Junkera diving into the turn nine there. Main straightaway is a short one over the start finish strike. Third spot belongs to Dominguez. He's trying to put Gonzalez a lap down as well. Gonzalez in the red Nextel car. Dominguez in the green and white Herdes machine. Tracy right behind Junkera. First time today he's been right there. Pit, pit, pit. Remember, two wheels, wheels on two wheels on two. Wheels on two. Watch your speed in the pit lane. You've got nobody to block your entry. Nobody to block your entry. Nobody to block your exit. Top three cars come to pit row. That is Paul Tracy's radio. We're all set up and ready for you. It might be a fairly quick one, so be ready for it. Be ready for a quick one. Everything's looking smooth. Everything's going well. There will be no changes for Paul Tracy. He thinks the car is good. There is no changes for Junkera. Tracy beats Junkera out of the pits as Bourdais comes in. Sebastian Bourdais now about to peel off and come in. There is only few, uh, tire pressure changes for Bourdais. Calvin? Well, Mario Dominguez was in and he didn't beat the leaders out, Derek, but there was a change on his car. They went up with the front tire pressures and down on the front wing. The car is a little bit too pointy, too responsive on the front end, and that actually works over the rear tires. So an adjustment for Dominguez, he should be a little bit stronger on this second stint. Oriel Serbia also off pit road. Bourdais beats Serbia away from the stop. So the first round of green flag stops shuffles the running order here. Tracy should be the leader. And Neil Mickelwright gave us a little hint. He says this might be a quick one. Sounds like he knew it was going to be a quick one, which to me says that was a short fill. Putting fuel in these cars takes longer than changing tires, so you do have that option if you think you can make it. To leave it a few gallons short, it's a lighter race car, and it gets you off pit road quicker. The penalty you pay is on the next stop. If, if you can't go quite as far as the next guy, it's a gamble. It, it could be undone the other way around. So now the onus is on Paul. Paul needs to, to build a little bit of a gap to Bruno. 2.1 seconds, the gap for Tracy as we ride with Junkera. Under the Bridgestone Bridge, here's Tracy, the leader in the Forsyth Index car, Derek Daly. Neil Mickelroy, that was a superb looking stop. Your man Tracy now leads. Was that a short fill? Um, it was just a little bit, yeah, probably by about three or four gallons. He, he said he was tired of looking at the same rear wing. Um, are you comfortable that that's not too big a gamble? I'm sorry, can you say anything? Are you comfortable that that's not too big a gamble? Um, no, we've got so far to go in the race that, I mean, all sorts of things could happen, so we don't consider it to be a gamble at all at this point. Thanks, Neil. 50 laps to go. Shakira, bottom of your screen. There's Tracy off pit road first to take the lead. Started third, he is now first. Should Kara back to second, Dominguez third. And here's a look at your leaders, where they came in, where they were running on when they came to pit road, and where they are now. Should Kara lost the spot, Tracy gained the lead. Dominguez holds station, Serbia lost three spots. Bourdais lost one, two. We'll be back. Tracy 4.3 seconds ahead of Mario Dominguez, who continues to run second through the streets of Denver. We are past halfway now. 52 laps are on the board. 38 remain. And you're almost into the window where you can make your second stop, Tommy. In fact, we are in the legal window. We are in the legal window, and it's very close. The furthest anyone went was 38 laps, so they could stop now and make it to the end on fuel. Tracy took the advantage on pit road, perhaps with a short fill. We shall see. Well, time for our Bridgestone passion for excellence. Bridgestone here this weekend using the ice in the Pepsi Center to demonstrate their product.
What makes the Blizzak winter tire so special is a multi-cell compound. It's very soft and think of it almost like a sponge. It sucks the water off the ice so the tire rubber stays gripped, almost glued to the ice. And that's why it runs so much better than an all-season tire and it can run circles around regular tires. We'll let old Chrome Horn have a shot at me. Okay, Paul, five bucks every time you spin it. I think this is a setup. <laughs> I think making me look bad here. Sorry, Mom. Uh-oh. Our Bridgestone passion for excellence. How about this? Sebastian Bourdais trying to come back on his teammate, Bruno Junquera. Down at a nine, Bourdais gets by him for third spot. Junquera right Junquera back at him. comes right back at. Oh boy, down into one it's again. It's the replay of the start. Bourdais goes by on the inside and takes over third spot. So Sebastian Bourdais, who restarted 13th after that turn one skirmish, races his way up to his teammate, passes him on the front straightaway moments ago. <laughs> you think these guys are friendly? See that wave from Bourdais? <laughs> Get him, so Bass. So Bourdais to third spot. Team as owners you, looking on. Go ahead, Derek. As you watch Paul Newman here, he was delighted. But just a couple of seconds ago, there were a big celebration from these two people here because this is Patrick and Jocelyn Bourdais. Sebastian's parents have come from France, and they are enjoying this. And incidentally, the radio message to Sebastian was, you can pass Bruno, but remember, you can't really trust him, and we must finish. Sebastian came back and said, we can win this thing, Craig. Craig being his engineer. Well, the way Bourdais flown up through the field, Tommy, I'm not so sure he doesn't have a good shot, but he is 11 seconds behind Paul Tracy. He needs a break. He needs a full course yellow. Well, maybe. I mean, he could use a full course yellow, but uh, towards the end of that stint, as you recall, Bourdais was complaining about oversteer, but he was really not losing as much time as everybody else. So late in the stint, it seems to be where his advantage gets even greater. Trying to lap Roberto Gonzalez here, the Nextel 21 car, the PKV machine. Gonzalez loose off the corner. Back in 15th spot, two laps down to the leader, Paul Tracy. Now, very interesting communication from the index team to Paul Tracy. They just said, we can make it to the end of the window. So that might have determined how much fuel they put in because nobody can go beyond that. For the second stop. Yes. And that will fall to Tracy's benefit. Exactly. A short fill, usually you, you pay the price on the other end. And this time they can't because no one can run longer than that lap 77. If you're just joining us with Tommy Kendall, I'm Rick Benjamin, Bronte Tagliani, Derek Daly, Calvin Fish with us as well this weekend. Ninth race of the Champ Car World Series season in 2004. It's the Grand Prix of Denver, third renewal of this event. Watching a battle between A.J. Allmendinger and Ryan hunter Ray, who's back in the thick of things as they fight it for six. The Western Union 10 car of Allmendinger has six. Ryan hunter Ray's four car. That's the Urdez machine. He's back there in seven. And Allmendinger trying to hang on at the moment. He has struggled since the drop of the green. Allmendinger in the top five earlier today. Gave up that spot. He is 30 seconds behind race leader Paul Tracy. Now, if you're just joining us, let's reset things for you as well. A rule changed this week by Champ Car World Series officials. Instead of a couple of mandatory green flag stops, we've got one window that you have to stop in. It could be green or yellow, and that window is open between lap 51 and 77. So explaining what happened in terms of Paul Tracy, as we take a look at the rules, oh, a guy Smith has stopped out on the racetrack. He's got problems in a runoff area. 
you have to fuel you have to change four tires or it's a one lap penalty Tracy stopped and got the lead on pit road but we know he short filled the tank to get off pit road a little quicker now you're saying Tommy he can go to 77 the end of the window the index team just says we can make it to the end of the window so um, that that's surprising because I mean that's another full 38 38 laps they, that, that was the communication from the team to Paul and Tracy continues to lead he's built the lead to five and a half seconds over Mario Dominguez we're hearing that Guy Smith that has stalled the 17 car and he is actually on the track in the racing line so they're going to push him down to the runoff area and get him out of harm's way the champ car safety crew doing a great job as always to get the 17 car out of harm's way Oriole Servia's smoke problem seems to have cleared up the OakTV.com 11 car in fifth Tracy's in command five and a half seconds to the good over Mario Dominguez Sean Kira and the Newman Haas Pacific Care team he's fallen to fourth spot right now his teammate Sebastian Bourdais with a terrific move several moments ago getting to third Bourdais now 9.7 seconds behind Paul Tracy he needs a full course yellow or some audacious work in the second pit stop to get up into contention here Meantime, Derek Daly, what's Junqueira's situation? He's just lost total contact with the leaders. Bruno Junqueira has lost his brakes. It is a major struggle. He's lost confidence. That is why he's now slowing down. Maybe he just wore them out earlier. Well, that does happen sometimes on these tight street courses. Well, that would explain it, because I was just looking at the scoring monitor, and I was puzzled, because now he's back up to speed. He ran a, a low 102 the lap before, which is right up there with the fastest laps of the race. So, uh, but but it, it, the braking zones and, and how deep you have to go in a champ car, if you lose confidence in that, I mean, you're going flat out until the two marker some places. And if you don't have total confidence in those brakes, then you're going to, the whole thing, you're going to have to back off everywhere and ease back into it, which apparently he's now done. And maybe he cooled it enough that the brake pedal got hard again and he was able to get back to his pace. But he lost a lot of ground. Bruno Shankara runs fourth. Down the back stretch, all alone, trying to stay in front of Oriole Serbia, but he's got 19 seconds worth of advantage over Serbia in that fight for fourth. Paul Tracy, meantime, great pit strategy, putting Tracy in the lead, bidding for his third victory of the season. Tracy, the defending series champion, though, fourth now in this year's title fight. Had a difficult weekend last week at Elkhart Lake at Road America. Let's take a look at what happened to Tracy. Started up front, just squeezed by Bourdais. Had problems on pit road. What we need to do is to build a gap to your competition. You're at the front. We need to build a gap. We know what we're doing. We're doing the best uh, available strategy. Careful with your speed in the pit lane. Oh, there's a problem on the left front. Got to hit a gun failure. Unbelievable. That black flag for Tracy is for avoidable contact with Jim Kerr. That is an absolutely horrible call. Just a sampling of what went wrong for Paul Tracy last week. He was penalized after that contact with Bruno Junquera. They made a call to come to pit road under yellow. Didn't work out for him. They had an air gun failure. Just about everything that could have made a bad day happened to him last week. And actually, week. to update you on that call at the end that I was so critical of, I talked to Derek Higgins. We looked over the footage. He, he didn't agree with me at all. Um, but then Paul and his engineer put together some data that clearly showed that he broke the earliest of any outlap. And so they actually said, you know what, in light of this, the officials came over and apologized to Paul, said we can't undo it, but that was not your fault. And so he, he says that's the first time any officials have ever come and done that to me. It, it, he appreciated it. And I think it'll help uh, cool, uh, thaw the, uh, the, the freeze between those two groups. Tracy's teammate Patrick Carpentier ran second at Milwaukee back on the racetrack after his second stop. He came in running eight. Fuel and tires. Derek Daly, did they make any adjustments to the seven car? There are no adjustments. He said he's happy despite the fact that he's just a little bit off the leader's pace. Green flag stop for Carpentier in the legal window, so he has made his second stop. And his one required between laps 51 and 77. It shuffles him back to 10. There's Serbia in the 11th car. A.J. Allmendinger right behind him. This is for position. They're running 5th and 6th. Little smoke showing that time. Off Dale Coyne's YokeTV.com car. But Serbia still at full speed. Ran a 105 last lap, though. And Allmendinger a 104.8.
So they're not nearly keeping touch with the leader, serving now 35 seconds behind Tracy. And we understand, Rick, that there's no sign of any problem with that engine on the telemetry. So Dale Coyne has been flicking through the various screens that he has available on his monitor, looking at the number 11 car. They see the smoke, but no sign on the telemetry, which reads all of the information from the car back to the pit lane that they have a problem right now. How about Sebastian Bourdais? Third spot, no problems for him. After recovering from that early spin, Carpentier trying to chase down the leaders. Meantime, Tracy, he's Not got only. his mirrors full. Wow. Mario Dominguez in second spot. That's Carpentier. That's Carpentier. That's what I thought, but, yeah. But, I mean, talk, not just recovering. I mean, Bourdais, the last lap, everybody's in the low 102s. The last lap, Bourdais ran a 101.5. Shades of qualifying, where he's just in another league. Now, remember, he's done this without a yellow flag. Yeah. He has gained everything back and then some. He is 6.3 seconds behind Paul Tracy. Now, it's gonna, like I said, the test is going to come with Mario Dominguez getting by him. But he's taking huge chunks out of that lead, and I, I wouldn't put it past him. I, he says he thinks he can win this thing. He might. Dominguez started fifth. He runs second. They're stuck behind Patrick Carpentier, who just stopped. He's back tenth, a lap down now. Carp now, this is Tracy's teammate, remember, but Carpentier needs to get out of the way. He's a lap car. This is not cool. Heading to the back stretch. We'll see if he gives him room here. Bourdais wants second from Dominguez. Dominguez in the green car, Bourdais in the McDonald's yellow and red car. We're hearing Bourdais maybe coming to pit road. That he was very wide. close to Bourdais getting in the back of Dominguez. You saw when he got real close, that last little bit, he lost downforce. Sebastian Bourdais talking to his team on the radio into turn one where he spun on the first lap. He's lost touch with Dominguez now. And Rick Dominguez has been given the green light. The team are in great shape with fuel. Now we see Bourdais peel off. So Dominguez can go full rich. He can reach lap 77, they believe. And Bourdais is in 10 laps earlier than that number. As Bourdais comes slowly down pit road, let's listen. Look for Todd Hitcher Marks. Pulling on the lights, Al. He's told the fuel will be a quick stop. This has to be perfect. Bourdais is full of confidence, and he believes still that he can win this thing. Scrub tires, not new Bridgestones. No changes. Go, 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 go now. 10.7 seconds that appear to be good. We'll only know how good after Tracy and Dominguez have their stops. Final stop for Bourdais, 23 laps from the checkered flag, but if Dominguez can go 10 more laps, that's a huge difference. Yeah, I mean, the, the, these outlaps will be will be critical, and uh, we saw the, the speeds dropping off at the tail end of the stints before. If that happens, then the advantage of going longer isn't as great, but uh, the laps that these guys were turning right before that stop seems to indicate otherwise. The track appears to be getting faster and faster. All Tracy made time. After a great quick pit stop that vaulted him around Junkera to the lead, he's dominating. I think, I think the gamble by the McDonald's guys, and maybe it's not much of a gamble, is that he's going to have these slow laps on cold tires, but he's so much faster than everybody. Ten, the longer it goes, it almost works in his favor once he gets up to speed. Masakani there in the American Medical Response number 19. Tracy reeling him in. Masakani 15th. Big weekend for the Dale Coyne team because AMR is based here in Denver as well. They're entertaining a lot of folks at the racetrack at the Champ Car World Series Grand Prix of Denver. Tracy five and a half seconds in front of Mario Dominguez. Bourdais with that green stop. He's 29 seconds off the lead, but he only lost a spot to Shunkara. He's back and forth. Tracy continues to lead, coming up on 20 laps to go. Less than 20 laps to go through the streets of Denver. Paul Tracy leads. Oriol Serbia has had a good day. He's fifth, but Calvin Fish, we're seeing more and more smoke off the engine cowl of the 11 car. What's going on? Well, the team have really confused as to what it is. I talked earlier about the fact on the telemetry, the computer screens, they're seeing no sign of damage to the engine, but they have had a report from the officials. They think one of the air jacks may be dragged. So what the team are doing, they're gearing up for his final pit stop, and they have this mechanical jack. They'll put this underneath the back of the car, pull the car up in the air, so they can get the tire change done. That will certainly cost them a few seconds. Some of the teams practice this. Hopefully, Dale Coyne and the boys have been doing this in the weeks off. Yeah, you'd hate to see him give up a top five for a problem like that. Oh, one of the Yardes cars has gone around. Ryan Hunter Ray, who was running well up in seventh, has spun at turn nine. That's Looks like his uh, left front. Got a tire down skew. there, yeah. Or just hanging on there. 
That is one of the places on the track where the grip is difficult because of the transition from asphalt to concrete. We were hearing his radio there momentarily. Teammate Dominguez gets by. He stopped right there. We're still green. Shankara gets by in third. With four laps to go before the window closes. Some nuggets about Ryan Hunter right here in Denver. Said everything's slick. Uses second gear most of the way around the racetrack. Told you, Tommy, he's more out of control here than any place else the tour goes. Well, that's the nature of this surface. Because of that, that the, the, the limit being like a black, an on-off switch, it's not progressive where you can sneak up on it, go a hair over it. it. You really are taking lots of chances all the time. We were told earlier that Champ Car officials wanted to try, avoid, try to avoid going to full course caution if possible, but I'm really surprised we haven't seen a yellow out there in nine. That's a fast part of the racetrack, and Hunter Ray is right in the middle of the racetrack, and now the yellow does wave. Full course caution on lap 74, 73 complete. 16 to go. Ryan Hunter Ray still stopped there, and Tracy comes by. Leaders will be coming in because the end of the fuel window, the pit stop window, is about to arrive. Listening to Paul Tracy on the radio, Neil Miller. Okay, right. a two wheels under, two wheels under, and watch your speed in the pit lane. Two wheels under, watch your speed in the pit lane. You've got a whole mess going on. We've got a lot of people in the pit lane right now. I want you to watch out for Rodolfo. Watch for Rodolfo. He's coming out. He should be clear. Right down on the mark. Right underneath the guy's hand. We're looking good. Should be fairly quick. Should be fairly quick. Stop. Everything's going smooth. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. You heard the calming voice of Neil Mickelwright, who wants to talk. Paul Tracy in, and meanwhile, Bruno Junquera just comes in behind him for what will now be his final stop. He puts on a brand new set of Bridgestones. Calvin? Well, Mario Dominguez was in, obviously, at the same time. Derek, good, clean stop here. They wanted to make a front wing change, but they couldn't afford to lose any time. So it was tires, fuel only. Dominguez back underway. They wanted to take more front wing out of the Herdes car. As we watch the safety car on the track and the leaders have made their stops, there is Dominguez running in second spot. He will be able to close right up on the back end of Tracy for this restart. Jean-Cara and Bourdais will get to close the gap as well. And that could set up quite a 10 or 12 lap sprint to the checkers here in the streets of Denver. Tracy, though, is your leader. Chief starter giving the indication to the field and to the safety car. One lap till the restart. Well, Derek Daly, the guy who tied a legendary champ car mark behind the wall before the checkered flag. Indeed, Jimmy Vassar retires the Gulfstream car. Jimmy, it looked like a bit of a struggle right from the warm-up this morning. What eventually put the car away? Uh, you know, we really don't know. It uh, started uh, misfiring a bit, and uh, uh, so we, we had to park with the, the throttle linkage. was lock, It was locking up, and so it wasn't working smoothly. It's, so, you know, we don't, we're not so sure about that, but we're really disappointed in our performance in the race. We expected so much more. We qualified six on Friday and uh, woke up Saturday morning. And, uh, you know, from then on out, we just got slower and slower and bigger problems uh, throughout the weekend. And we, we honestly can't, uh, we, we, we don't have the answers. So, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty baffling for the Gulfstream team. Jimmy, on the bright side, the 192 consecutive stars, the record you hold with Alan Sir Jr. That's still got to make it a pretty special day. Well, certainly, whenever t anytime you get mentioned in the same sentence with Alistair Jr. in regards to records, you know, it makes me feel proud, and uh, uh, it's, it's a heck of an accomplishment. But, um, you know, I wish I could have raced a little bit more like Alistair Jr. today. It was a little disappointing, but, uh, you know, we'll carry on to Montreal, and we'll bounce back. The team's been ga getting momentum and, and showing speed at times, and, uh, you know, we just have to do that uh, on a more consistent basis now. Indeed, he mentions Montreal. He will be the record holder after the start in Montreal. Go back a few weeks to Vancouver. Jimmy told me that their big problem has been shock absorbers, their damper package. I would think that'd be a big factor maybe as to why they had a tough weekend here because it's so bumpy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's that's what kind of keeps the tires connected to the road. And yeah. if you're baffled, it's usually you can trace it usually <laughs> to the shocks. Getting set for a restart. Oh, a little brake check there perhaps by Bourdais on Jean Kira. Coming to the restart, 12 to go. Tracy, Dominguez, Bourdais, and Juncara, one through four. Here comes Bourdais. Bold move to the inside. Dominguez locks him up. Bourdais over the curb. They touch. Dominguez goes around. Bourdais to second. 
Dominguez back on the hammer. I have never seen a guy lose that little time on a spin. Laying down black ribbons of tire rubber. Serbia in trouble. Chaos behind him. Michelle Jourdain trying to get by Serbia, who was sixth on the restart. A.J. Allmendinger did get by him, so Allmendinger jumps up to fifth. Serbia to sixth. Tracy continues to lead. On board, Haberfeld. He's got Justin Wilson there with him in the MyJack car. Bourdais and Junkera now running in second and third spots. They both got by Dominguez. They started on the front row, remember. Here's Tracy. Tracy jumps in front. Let's take a look at what happened off the restart. You think those guys in the front were geeked up? Oh, man. Well, you can see Bourdais reaching for it as they came off the final corner. Quick dive to the inside. Dominguez stayed in the middle, tried to protect, but he couldn't do it. He stayed in the middle, and then he faded inside. Bourdais was almost mowed those cones down. Jankara took advantage to get back to third. Here it is from Jankara's onboard view. He was close to Bourdais, but Bourdais able to jet away on the next straightaway. Calvin Fish. Down here with Tom Brown, team manager for Herdes. You had your sights on the lead. We got the caution, and then very aggressive there. Bourdais going for it, and your man's trying to put a block. Yeah, we did not need that last yellow, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, we just, uh, we're looking at it. It's tough. It's a tough call. Well, we've got to get back to the action there. Tracy's under pressure, boys. Down the back stretch, Tracy perhaps with a problem because Bourdais just caught him. No problem at all. Bourdais for the lead on the inside. Both on the push to pass. Into nine. Bourdais gets by. Unbelievable. Tracy right back at him. Ten to go this time by. And Bourdais pulls away. Wow. Tommy, as quickly as Bourdais got to Tracy while we were hearing about Dominguez, I thought maybe he had a problem. Yeah, clearly, I mean, he, he was having trouble getting up to speed. Um, big time sideways onto the front straightaway. And Tracy not able to maintain the pace at all. This reminds me of what happened to Junquera when Tracy got by him after the last set of stops. Just took him a long time to get going. Junquera third. Derek Daly, what's the problem for Tracy? Neil McElright, Bourdais seemed to gather Paul up pretty quickly there. Did Paul have a problem? Uh, we're looking at the data now. It looks as though maybe we locked up the brakes going into turn five, which allowed him to get a bit of a run on us going on down to the back straight. So uh, it's not over yet. Still 10 laps to go. You've watched the laps by Bourdais. Do you believe you have the speed to run him down potentially? Um, truthfully, I don't think we have the speed, but I think Paul Tracy has the talent. Oh, well, there's the challenge. That's pushing all your chips to the center of the table. Well, that's like I said. I mean, there are times when he, he doesn't have the car, but he just calls on every trick in the book and sometimes makes something happen. Um, you can't over... If a guy's got a huge speed advantage, he's not going to get an opportunity to, to do something like that unless we get another restart. Well, the gap, 2.4 seconds. So not only did Bourdais catch Tracy and pass him on the backstretch going to nine, he's pulled away now with nine to go. Jankara, meantime, trying to reel in Tracy. So the Newman Haas team, Sebastian Bourdais, 13th on the restart after the early caution here. He's raced his way back to the lead, bidding for his fifth win of the season. And Bourdais is all alone with clean racetrack in front. Here's a look at the move on the backstretch. The lead bid here by Bourdais. Tracy unable to do anything about it. Yeah, I mean, he that, getting team reaction there on pit road. They should be excited. I mean, this is an incredible performance by this young Frenchman. I, I have to say it's fitting with the kind of gap that he had on everybody in qualifying to come up through the field. Uh, I mean, this is you're, you're watching a performance like you're not going to see very many times. A track that people say is hard to pass on. Yeah. It's one thing to have a speed or a time advantage in a place like this. It's quite another to be able to use it to pass champ cars under race conditions. Up on the top of your screen, our running order, along with push to pass time remaining. Remember that push to pass button, right side of the steering wheel gives a driver 50 more horsepower, extra turbo boost for one minute of time. Here's Jun Kara, who led early after the turn one skirmish with his teammate Bourdais. He's won the first two races here in the last two years. Right now, though, is third and can't get by Tracy. 
Mario Dominguez, who got passed on that restart. He got shuffled back to fourth. Dominguez coming up on Junquera. He wants to get back onto the podium here if he can. Riding with Junquera. Junquera about eight tenths of a second behind Tracy. Seven to go this time by. The gap is almost four seconds. Bourdais over Tracy. Sebastian Bourdais has radioed in. He said, I think there's something wrong with the left rear. Kenny Seawick and Craig Hams have looked into it and looked out of the date and said, no, you're fine. Keep moving forwards. Well, I, I, the only thing I can guess is that he meant the left rear tire and they checked the pressure on the telemetry. If he thinks there's a problem with the left rear suspension for maybe when he uh, bumped up against Bruno, let's listen. Were they quiet on the radio for now? That last lap, they all ran virtually the same time. He pulled out that huge lead. Now they all ran 103.6. 103.6, 103.6, 103.8 for Bruno. 103.7 for Dominic. All we need to do is stay in front. Keep it on the island. Craig Hampson, the team manager for the McDonald's two car at Bourdais, talking to his driver. Look at those tires, Tommy. Has he grained up that tire a little bit? Watch the rotation of the tire as Bourdais comes at you. Remember, he's just raced the wheels off the two car to get it to the lead. He's running about a second and a half slower than he had been earlier. L6 plus four. That's, that's six laps to go, plus four seconds on Paul Tracy. They all ran within a tenth of each other again that lap. So Bourdais got the advantage. He's got a four-second lead. This is Juncara running third in his Pacific Air Lola. Tracy up ahead in the Forsyth Index car. Looked like Tracy had this one in the bag and was headed to the house. Bourdais said, uh-uh. Back there in the Erdez car, the 55, Dominguez runs fourth. Almendinger fifth in front of Servia. Five to go this time by. Five laps to go for the leaders. A.J. Allmendinger's brand new Western Union livery back on the car. Hometown race for the Roos Sports Squad. Allmendinger in 10th. Calvin, oh, contact. Rodolfo Levine and Alex Tagliani back there battling for 10th. They get together in 9. Levine is stalled. Tagliani back on the butt. So Tagliani, no caution. Local yellow, we're being told, is all they'll display in turn 9. We've had two full course yellows. The last one for Ryan Hunter Ray, which led to this dramatic turnaround that has put Bourdais back in the lead. Here's a look at what happened. Wow, Levine up over the wheel of Tagliani. Didn't see what set that up, but they got together. Looks like Tag was trying to get down the inside of Rodolfo. And Levine went bouncing up over. Yep. So the cart, the champ car safety crew pushing the Corona beer car off the racetrack. Okay. They're going to pull you back, and they'll try and start you from a safe area. So just get ready to restart. Levine's radio traffic there. And Tracy's car starting to come alive. He was four-tenths quicker than Bourdais that lap. Watching the battle. This is Mario Haberfeld. Mario Haberfeld running in eighth spot. Justin Wilson. This is your leader, Bourdais. Three to go, next time by. Bourdais with a lead of 3.8 seconds. This is Tracy running second. Third spot belongs to Junquera. It's been a wild one here in the streets of Denver. We'll do it all again in two weeks. Sunday afternoon, the 29th, we'll be in Montreal at Circuit Gio Villeneuve for the 10th round of the 2004 championship. Riding with Junquera, running in third spot, three laps to go. 
Top of your screen, our running order and the splits between the cars. Shakira slowly reeling Tracy in. He's a second behind him. Newman Haas hoping to score a 1-2. Tracy wants to remain second and try to gain some points. He will vault past Tagliani, no doubt, to get back to third in the championship fight. But if Bourdais can close the deal here today, Bourdais will take a giant step toward winning his first champ car championship in just his second season on the tour. This would be the fifth win of the season for Sebastian Bourdais. And you're going to see a, be a tired career. young man after this race yeah, to run that kind hard. of pace. Watching Bourdais. Bourdais all by himself. Five seconds to the good right now, running in the lead. And to add insult to injury, he's geared it up again. That last lap, eight tenths quicker than everybody else. That is thumbing your nose at the rest of the field. Paul Tracy continues to soldier on in second spot. It's been a wild one today in the streets of Denver. Two laps to go, two to go. Tracy on the push to pass, trying desperately to reel in Bourdais. White flag is in the air for the leaders. Here comes Bourdais. Restarting 13th after that skirmish on lap one. He has charged back to the lead. And that lap a 101-2. I believe that is the fastest race lap. Should care on any time with his hands full, trying to hold up Mario Dominguez. Last time around this 1.6 mile circuit here in the streets of Denver. Bourdais all alone, all by himself on his way to his fifth win of the season. A very peaceful one. Watching Tracy. Running in second spot. Should Kara has caught him, but Bourdais on a Sunday drive now through the streets of Denver. The Newman Haas squad taking a look at the monitors. Final corner. Fans are on their feet here in Denver. Sebastian Bourdais heads to the checkered flag from 13th to the lead. And Bourdais wins his fifth of the season. Tracy will come home second. Should Kara over the line in third. Dominguez gets fourth. A.J. Allmendinger headed to the strike. And he will finish in fifth position. I think it's okay, it's just both of me. Can I make it to run? Five guys. Radio traffic with Sebastian Bourdais and his team. Guys, if it's not a race, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Bourdais saluting the fans with the number one signal, the real number one signal of the clenched fist. What a great drive. A great drive. His parents here, that's his girlfriend, Claire, who moved here uh, from France, one of the top runners in France. Moved to the States to be with Sebastian. And Bourdais on his cool down lap. What a run. Absolutely Started on the pole. Incredible. What a day, if we can recap for a moment, Bourdais started on the pole, got together with his teammate Jean Cara in turn one, went around, lost the lead, thought his day was done, came off 13th on the restart, methodically picked him off, got to the front, and blew by Tracy. As Bourdais will come to victory lane in a moment. Moments ago, the Newman Haas McDonald's team celebrating. Carl Haas and Paul Newman celebrating up top in the scoring stand. Bourdais says, hey, I'll serve up some donuts today. Tracy can do it, I can do it. Saluting the huge throng of fans who've turned out in Denver this weekend. You, you think that turn one incident with his teammate didn't fire him up? Absolutely it did. So Bourdais headed to victory lane. Calvin Fish with the runner up. Down here with PT and Paul, I know you dramatically needed to move in the points here today and you had a strong race car, but Bourdais, once you had that yellow, he was just too strong. I couldn't do anything about it. You know, it's uh, one of those situations where it was cold tires for me and 
I don't know what his situation was, but he came from the back to the front, and he obviously he's, he's had a perfect car all weekend, and uh, there was really nothing I could do, so I didn't try to block him or hold him up. I braked as late as I could, but it, he was just too strong. Certainly a lot of action there in the first turn. It got very tight at the start of the race. What did you see with Junquera and Sebastian going side by side there? Well, I mean, I think uh, Bruno made a better start and was ahead, and Sebastian didn't want to give up. So it was one of those things where they're both trying to go for the same spot, and uh, that's how it ended up. I knew something was going to happen, though. I, just, I figured that was going to happen. Well, Sebastian Bourdais is making his way in here with Victory Lane, and uh, big noise behind us. I'm sure there'll be a lot more when he jumps out of the car. Tracy Sandin resigned to second spot. Well, I think he realized he, he gave his best performance and uh, really had nothing for him. They take the headrest out of the car to allow Sebastian Bourdais in victory lane to climb out of the McDonald's number two. Fifth time this season that the young French pilot has guided that race car to victory lane. In a season and a half of the tour, Tommy Kendall, he's won eight times. Well, he's clearly something special. We saw that from the very first race he did in St. Pete uh, last year. And, uh, and this year, a year under his belt, you only expected him to get a little bit better, having seen the circuits. And Sebastian, uh, this is a great celebration here. His dad is here from France. His mom, Jocelyn, is here. That might be the finest drive that we have seen from Sebastian Bourdais. People are here. They're shaking with excitement. Sebastian. Sebastian, you look hot, you look sweaty. That was as good a drive as we have seen from you in a difficult, difficult racetrack. Uh, I think it could barely be better. I mean, at the start of the race, everything went wrong. And, uh, you know, I knew we had a good car. And as long as I was not going to go lap down, it was possible to come back. But I never thought that we could win the race uh, until the, the, the half of the distance. And then everything was uh, going so fast. We were coming back very close, and that was amazing. Go on, give her a kiss. There you go. That's what you get when you win a race like this, fellas. The celebration continues in the streets of Denver. Sebastian Bourdais' fifth win of the year. An incredible run from the back of the pack. A wild one here in the streets of Denver. A terrific run for Sebastian Bourdais, 13th after a restart early. He was the restart, really. He was the cause of the full course caution. Got into trouble with his teammate going down into turn one after starting on the pole. Restarted at the rear, raced his way to the front, got by Paul Tracy after the final pit stop, and sailed home to victory. Junquera, Dominguez, and Almendinger, the rest of the top five. Justin Wilson up to seventh at the end, and Mario Hopperfeld with the top ten. Yeah, and a good run for the uh, the Reynard. They they came close to a top five, but they couldn't quite close it out in Elkhart. It's nice to see them get a top ten run. And here. Alex Tagliani comes back from a couple of incidents to claim a top ten last week's winner. Nelson Philippe's best run, a 13th best run in his first run. With the MyJack team, Michelle Jourdain back to 14th. Bourdais getting the applause well-deserved from the fans as he walks in to the post-race news conference in the media room here at the Pepsi Center where the Denver Nuggets and the Colorado Avalanche play. Let's take a look at the season standings now with nine races complete. Bourdais builds his lead over Junquera to 58 markers with his fifth win. Tracy back to third. And I bet you Bruno or Sebastian Bourdais would probably tell you that's the finest drive of his entire life. Carpentier back to fifth now in the standings tied with Tagliani. But Bourdais takes a huge step toward a championship this year in 2004. Bourdais celebrating a victory lane. Tommy, he's going to be awfully hard to stop for the championship. Well, he is. And I mean, you can see the look in Bruno Juncker. I think he really fired himself up, said, I'm going to assert myself on this start. He did. Well, then Sebastian Bourdais came back and says, you know what? I'm the alpha male on this team. I'm just going to crush this uprising. And uh, <laughs> I mean, big time. Yeah, it sounds like I'm being dramatic, but that's what goes on in inter-team rivalries. And it was quite a rivalry for a while today, but Bourdais certainly laid claim to being the lead driver of the Newman Haas squad. Next up, Sunday, August 29th, we'll be with you for the Molson Indy Montreal at Circuit Gio Villeneuve. And race time is 2 o'clock Eastern time. Paul Tracy gets second today, but Sebastian Bourdais had him covered. Hope you've enjoyed our coverage of the Champ Car World Series, the Grand Prix of Denver. Be sure and join us from Montreal two weeks from today. For Derek Daly, Calvin Fish, Bronte Tagliani, and Tommy Kendall, I'm Rick Benjamin congratulating our winner, Sebastian Bourdais. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.